Wouldn't it be amazing if you could build a business and make money and passive income from home? I mean, even if you make money while you sleep, isn't that the dream? Well, that's what today's video is all about. I'm going to go over nine different ways that you can start building a business right now from home with no money to actually get started. Hey everyone, it's Graham here and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I help break down into bite-sized chunks your path to online success. Each week I release videos to show you tips, tricks and strategies to help you become successful online, all while showing you my journey along the way. If you are new to my channel and you like any of the content that is being shared, please take some time to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any content I release in the future. Also, you can find any of the links relating to this video in the description box below. So let's get into it. When starting an online business or any business for that matter, the truth is you'll only get out what you put in. So what I suggest before you start going through any of the business strategies outlined in this video, I think it's best to pick one of the items, get super focused on that, invest your time and effort in that strategy, plan it properly and execute it. Make sure to pick one that you will find the most enjoyment and fun out of. Because at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying it, you'll most likely lose motivation, not persevere, and actually give up at the end of the day. I don't want any of you to do that. I want you to pick one, plan it, execute it, and see the results. It'll probably take a little bit of time in the beginning, but those results will slowly, slowly start to grow. And before you know it, that curve will just shoot up like this. Now, before we get into these strategies, any of these, you can obviously have an outlay of money in the beginning. I'm not saying that you'll have zero cost because certain things are critical to your business. And that would be things like a computer, an internet connection, possibly a cell phone contract or data. But it is assumed that based on majority of us now, we'll all have those things at our disposal. So effectively, we've got a very minimal or almost zero cost to get started on these business strategies. So let's get into the different strategies now. Option one is to build an online course, basically an information product. If there's something that you know really well and you would like to teach it, then you can plan out the content accordingly and you can actually create something in a matter of weeks if you stay dedicated and plan out your content creation on a daily basis. The effort is obviously spent up front, setting it up, creating it, doing what you need there, but then the returns will flow in day after day, month after month, year after year, from that point on. Something like this is almost set and forget, where you can set it up, spend the time in the beginning to do what you need to do, and thereafter, you'll have the opportunity to actually wake up in the morning and see money in your account, and you haven't actually needed to do anything for that. But now I'm sure you're saying to yourself, but Graham, what am I gonna teach? What am I gonna teach someone? I don't know what I know well, I don't know what I don't know well. So one thing you actually need to remember here, is you only actually need to be one or two steps further ahead than someone you're actually going to be teaching. And what everybody does actually forget is that you know a lot more about certain topics or subjects or industries than most other people actually in the world. You just need to sit and brainstorm, get a pen and paper out, write some ideas down, what do I know well, what don't I know well, and then assess what you can actually create a course on. And you can also get a lot of ideas by going to different websites and seeing what's actually selling well on there. And once you get an idea of what's actually selling well, what you can actually teach in those areas, then you can obviously pinpoint what you're going to be teaching and you can create a course on that. Once you've actually created your course, you can load it on a number of different platforms. So you can actually create your own website. If you've already got one perfect, otherwise if you know how to do one, you can create it there. You can create a Shopify store and load it up on there and just run ads through to the store or share the links on social media and so forth. You can load it up onto teachable.com or you can actually do it on a site called udemy.com, which in my eyes, it's good to get the traffic initially there if you want to. However, you're not going to really get a high ticket item on that platform because they do a lot of $10 promotions. So if you've gone and listed your course at $200, for example, generally you're going to be selling it at $10 and then obviously they take their cut as well. So there's a number of things that you need to consider, but there's a lot of options available for you. You just need to go out and actually create something and get it out there. Option two is affiliate marketing. The 
The basics of affiliate marketing is that I promote a product or service that I believe in and I think is very good. I then share that information, those links with other people and if they then take action on those particular links and go out and actually buy that product or service, well then guess what? I've actually earned a commission based on the fact that they've gone out and purchased something from that company via my affiliate link. And it's actually a great model because it's almost a win-win in almost every situation whereby the customer will then get a discounted code via maybe my affiliate link. They will then go through, purchase something. Now that company now earns some revenue on their side as well as obtain a new customer. And I get a commission from the fact that I've now been the middleman directing that customer through to that company. And there are a number of ways that you can actually go into affiliate marketing and promote the particular products. But you can do it on your own websites, you can do it on social media platforms, on article platforms. There's so many different ways and means that you can actually do it. One of them is actually myself doing it via videos on YouTube. And if you're searching for information products or different services or things to actually promote, there's so many different places. In this day and age, almost every company has an affiliate program. So you can go out, one of the big ones is clickbank.com. The other one there is Amazon Marketplace, or you can go to sites like Digistore24, there's JVZoo, there are so many different companies and things out there that you can then promote products that are listed on their platform. This is probably one of the easiest ways to actually start earning some money online where you don't have to do too much base work and you don't even have to create your own product. The product or service is already created by somebody else. You just need to get the people through to that point where they can purchase that product or service. Now option three is drop shipping. This in my opinion is a little bit harder to get started but it can be incredibly lucrative for you. With this strategy, you really need to focus, put a lot of time up front for researching products and work hard at this to become successful. But once you've got that process in place, it can actually be incredibly easy after a certain point and you can be making a lot of money. So some of you might be asking, what is drop shipping? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it, but some may not. So I'm gonna just go over an overview of what drop shipping is. Essentially with it is you do not need your own product to get going on this. You don't need your own storage or warehouse facilities to store any products. What you do is you actually go out and source wholesalers and suppliers of particular products that you are looking to sell. This can basically be from anywhere in the world. You then obtain the product from them, so you can get pictures from them, you can get the descriptions of the product, you can basically have everything sorted from the wholesaler side itself. Once you've got that identified, you can then create a store on Shopify, if you prefer an e-commerce platform, or you can actually create a sales funnel using something like ClickFunnels. And with that, you can drive traffic through to that store or your sales funnel and make some sales. You can use platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Google Ads, etc. to drive traffic through to that store in order to create the sale. Once you have people on there and they purchase the product, you then notify the supplier of that sale and you can either do it daily, in bulk, whatever the case is, however you've set up your system. You can even have automatic notifications going through to that particular supplier. And what will happen is that supplier will then package the product and ship it directly through to the customer themselves. So you won't have to handle any of that at all. You will then pay the supplier what they want and you will keep the profit. So for example, if that product is now $5 and you've sold it for $20, you pay them $5 and you keep $15 profit on your end. So you can make a really nice profit just being the middleman between customer and supplier. I really do believe in this method a lot. I think it's an incredible method. I think it's very simple to get into. The only thing you might need to have is a little bit of an ad budget so that you can kick off those ads and drive traffic to the particular product, unless you've got a big social media presence, in which case it'll probably be an easier start off for you. And with anything, obviously you need to hone your skills, get a little bit better at it, perfect it as you work across all little areas within the whole process. But there are obviously a lot of courses out there. There's a lot of videos out there that you can look at. And I will link a couple in the description as well. But I do think if you've got a little bit of an ad budget, this is a great opportunity for you to do this. But the, the, the crux of this entire thing is you need to find yourself a reliable supplier. If you do not have a reliable supplier, the chances are 
you'll probably get a lot of refunds coming through that'll impact your merchant account that you've got and it'll cause a little bit of problem there on that front. However, if you find a reliable supplier, you'll have very few refunds, in which case it's just easy sailing from there. Now, as we're going through all these strategies, I'd love to see in the comments which one you actually prefer, which one you may have started, which one you're going to start after watching this video. And also hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, please, I'd really appreciate a like on the video. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell. However, that like does help me a lot. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. It just helps me getting out there and sharing this content with other people who may need it. Option four is a social media marketing agency. There really is a lot of opportunity with this and it's a massive market that you can get into. The thing is you're probably thinking to yourself, well Graham, I can't do this. I don't know anything about social media networks. I just sit and scroll through, do what I need on a daily basis, see other people's comments, but how do I actually go about creating an agency for it? But think of it this way, you've actually been on social media networks for so long now on a daily basis and you're actually miles ahead of most small business owners out there. In fact, I guarantee in the area that you're staying at the moment, there are probably hundreds if not thousands of small business owners that actually do not spend a lot of time or know much about social media. So this is where you can actually step in and help them along the way. In fact, most small business owners, they're probably spending 40 to 60 hours a week actually just running their business, trying to keep things afloat, doing what they need in that front. They don't actually have any time whatsoever to deal with anything social media wise, do any promotions for their company, unless they've done something in maybe a newspaper or something of that sort. But the social media thing is generally far from their mind. And getting customers nowadays to a lot of businesses is actually driven from social media itself. So most small companies, if they don't have a social media presence of some form, they're almost not within the current times. I mean, they're back in the stone ages then, the way things are moving along at the moment. So you can actually reach out to all the business owners in your area, or even different areas. It doesn't have to be located specifically in your area. You can actually contact people throughout the country, basically, and help them with their social media. You can help them create content on their page. You can help them run ads through to their business. There are so many different things that you can help them with on a daily basis and a monthly basis that will earn you revenue along the way. And effectively, it's a numbers game. So the more people you reach out to, the more chances and opportunities you have to actually get them as a client and do what you need to do on a monthly basis to help them grow. And what's nice with this is the fee that you earn is generally a monthly fee for the work that you put in. And in most cases, the minimum fee is probably around $500. Some people are earning way higher than that. The middle ground or the base ground that I've seen is about the $500 a month mark per one client. And this can actually add up quite significantly. So if you've got five clients, that's all of a sudden two and a half thousand dollars a month that you now have at your disposal. And what's nice with this type of business is once you get a little bit better at what you do, once you hone your skills a little bit, you'll probably be spending a lot less time on any of the ad creation, on any of the content creation, and you'll probably only end up working maybe five days of, a, of an entire month itself. So you'll work five days, get paid for the month, thereafter they basically paid for your holiday for the rest of the month. So again, the more you spend time honing your skills, going through courses, going through videos, testing different things, testing what works, testing what doesn't, you'll manage to get through things a lot faster and earn a lot more money at the end of the day. And one thing with this guys is you don't have to be sort of stuck in your area or even in your country for that matter. This is a worldwide thing. You can get clients across the world and help them with their ads, help them growing their business, and you can sit at home doing it while they're halfway across the world. So it really is a great business model to get into. Number five is creating a YouTube channel. You can either choose to be the brand of your channel, in which case you'll show your face, such as I'm doing now on my channel, or you can pick a niche whereby you don't have to show your face, but it's easy enough for you to create content for that particular niche. It could be anything in terms of tech, luxury, make money online, whatever the case is, there's so many different areas out there and different niches that you can go into where you can actually create very popular videos and you don't have to show your face. If anything, at worst, you might need to do a bit of a voiceover on the video. But apart from that, there won't be you needing to be in front of a camera. 
Now, a lot of you are probably saying, yeah, but it takes a lot of time to get into it. It takes a lot of time to get monetized because at the end of the day, you do need 4,000 watch hours and a minimum of 1,000 subscribers to get monetized on your channel. The thing is that most people forget that you can actually earn money before that point where you've been monetized because you can actually do affiliate sales, you can sell your own courses, you can sell merchandise if you've got a good following that are already following you. So there are a number of different things that you can do to earn money before that point in time where you get your channel monetized and start earning ad revenue. And what we see out there at the moment, and I've, I've gone through a lot of different niches, I've looked at a lot of different channels where they've actually shown what they're earning. And it seems that the average is about the $3 to $5 mark per thousand views. So what this is and what is key is effectively your CPM is essentially how much money you earn per thousand views. And as I say, the average is about three to five dollars, depending on the niche that you're in. Some are a lot higher. So you'll just have to do the research on that. But if you're earning an average of three to five dollars per thousand views on a monthly basis, you can actually earn anywhere between a thousand and five thousand dollars monthly without having to do anything more than just create that initial video, get it out there and let people watch. But as the view time is generating, you actually earning more and more money. And if you go out there and take a look at a few channels, I mean, for example, there's Kevin David, who earned roughly $400,000 in one year in 2019. Then in 2019 as well, Graham Stephan, for example, earned, I think, $1.1 million. And this is just ad revenue, guys. This is anything to do with their own courses or any of that sort of merchandise. It's just ad revenue. So this really is a method that you really need to consider and see if you can actually get into. However, the key and the crux of this is you've got to stay consistent. So stay consistent, grow a channel, and the return will be there. Number six is selling your skills and expertise. So how you can go about doing this is there's a number of sites out there where you can actually freelance for people. So there's a site called Upwork. There's also a site called Fiverr. There's a number of other sites as well that I'm not gonna mention through now, but you can go onto these sites, you can create a profile for yourself and offer something to someone who needs it in their business but is unable to do it themselves. So for example, you can go through to Upwork, you can create a profile there, and you can actually bid on certain things that are required from other people, or just put your profile on there and let people search for what you can actually offer them. And then once they've come and approached you, then you'll go through the process of organizing what you need and helping them by providing your service and doing what they need you to do. Now this can be very lucrative. Now I've gone through a number of different sites and I've looked at a number of different profiles. And if you just do the maths, for example, on Fiverr, based on how many reviews they've had, how much they offer for their services, there are people earning a lot of money each year and each month to provide services for people. So for example, if you know how to create logos, offer that as a service. A lot of people don't have the time or the skills to actually do that. Offer that as a service and then earn money based on however many logos and the time spent on creating that logo. On Upwork, for example, there's a number of accounts there where if you go, depending on the type of niche, there's some there who just do voiceovers and they've earned over $200,000 in one year just doing voiceovers for people. So there's so many different things that you can do. You can do article writing, content creation. You can manage their websites, manage their social media, pretty much anything you can think of, even translations, you name it is on there. You can go there, see what's a good fit for you, plug in a profile for yourself, give a good description, etc., and see what happens. This is a very good way to actually earn money while you're sitting at home in your spare time and doing work for other people and helping them out. This can actually be a great side hustle if you've got a full-time job at the moment. And this side hustle can actually lead into a full-time job in a matter of months, depending on the type of product and service that you actually offer people. Number seven is creating an ebook for Kindle Marketplace. And it doesn't even have to be Kindle Marketplace. But if you're good at writing, whether it be nonfiction or fiction, this is a great way to earn some side income without having to do a lot on your part. Because if something's enjoyable to you, if you're writing a lot and you enjoy your writing, why not get it out there and let the other people read it and pay you for that time that you've now spent creating this book itself or creating this content within this book? So if you've always sat there and you've written a lot of novels 
or whatever the case may be, and you now think to yourself, okay, let me put this together and place it into an ebook. Let me self publish it on the Kindle Marketplace and earn some money from it. It really is a great way to do it. And you don't even have to have a thousand page book, it can be 20 pages, it can be 50 pages, whatever the case is, just get something out there that you can sell. There's some books going for 99 cents on there. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you'd be getting 30% royalties on that or 30 cents royalties for that 99 cents one. Whereas if you're getting a book at higher than $3, I think you're getting 70% of that particular fee as your royalty. So depending what length of book it is, depending on the price that you put it there, can also lead to a variation in what you're earning on there for passive income wise on Kindle Marketplace. And also if you've got a number of short stories, compile it into a compilation of short stories and sell that as a compilation. Those do very well actually. And it's very simple to get published on Amazon. All you'd really need is to get yourself a cover for your book created, whether you do it or outsource that. And in fact, you could even outsource the writing if you really wanted to. But once you've got that, you go through the Kindle Marketplace step by step, load up all the information that you need in the correct formats, load onto Amazon and let them do the work for you. They'll then promote it through to the Amazon Prime guys. They'll then promote it through in their email marketing that they've covered because any new releases, they're going to obviously push it a little bit more to try and get more sales for that. If you want to then kick up the sales, then you'll obviously have to promote it yourself as well. But at the same time, Amazon themselves are basically working for you. So why not take advantage of that, get a book out there and earn some money while you're creating things on the side where originally you probably didn't think, okay, let me publish it. But now's a good time to publish it because a lot of people got the time to read. It's a great marketplace to be in and it's a great way to earn additional income. Number eight is teaching English online. So with the current pandemic and the current situation that the world finds themselves in, there's a lot of additional work being done around online teaching and getting kids tutored online. So something like this whereby you can teach them English in foreign countries, it's a great way to earn additional income. And I've seen a lot of people earning anywhere from $10 an hour to $70 an hour, depending on how many hours they've actually allocated to teaching, whether they're more of a permanent versus a part-time tutor. So it's a very interesting and great field to actually get into. And all you really need is an internet connection. And with this way, you can earn some good money working a few hours a week. And for a lot of people, that money that's earned is actually equivalent to most people's monthly salary working 40 hours a week, whereby if you're teaching online, you're probably only working maybe 20 hours a week. I'm not entirely sure. It depends on the schedule that's provided. However, it's a lot less than a full salaried person working 40 hours a week. And you can actually earn the equivalent, if not more, than a full-time salaried person. So it's definitely something to consider in our current times and the current pandemic that we're actually facing. Option nine is podcasting. Now podcasting is actually one of the hottest topics at the moment and it's something that a lot of people are actually getting into. So one of the key things you need to consider is if you don't want to actually show yourself on camera and you're more comfortable actually just talking into a microphone, getting your thoughts out there for whatever period of time, 5, 10, 20 minutes, even an hour, depending on how long the podcast could be, this is probably the best choice for you and probably the most comfortable way that you can actually get out there and start earning some money. Podcasts are amazingly popular. People will listen to them while walking their dogs, while going to the gym, while even washing dishes or doing home chores, whatever the case is, it's in a very popular way to listen to some information without having to watch something. You can actually do something and just listen to it while we go. So if there's a particular niche out there or a type of topic that you want to discuss, this is probably a great way to get it out there and let the public actually hear what you have to say. Now you probably think to yourself, okay, but now I need a microphone to actually get my podcast done. But you actually don't have to worry about that. You can either use your phone, which has got a great recording app on there to actually do it, or you can actually use an app called Anchor. So you can either do it on the app or online. You're able to record directly into a podcasting app, edit it within that app, and distribute it with that. 
But if you're wanting to actually spend a little bit of money on a microphone, you can actually get some really cheap ones out there. For example, this one here is a lavalier microphone. I think you can get it for about 20 bucks on Amazon. I can also pop a link down below. Otherwise, you can go for the more expensive ones, like I'm currently using a Blue Yeti at the moment. And if I'm not mistaken, that goes for about $200 thereabouts. So depending what you're using or what you want to use, either way, it's easy enough to create a podcast. One of the best places to actually start a podcast is Anchor.fm. But essentially, Anchor is a place where you can load your podcast and they distribute it to a number of different sources. And it's effectively the, the YouTube of audio. And with that, you can actually get further things to earn money whereby it's a case of sponsorships or brand deals. And they actually approach you via Anchor. And with the popularity of podcasting at the moment, there's actually so much money being spent into podcasting. I mean, just as an example, Joe Rogan at the moment, I think he signed about a $200 million deal for his podcasting show. So with that kind of money being thrown into it, you know it's definitely a key area to try get into if you're comfortable speaking into a microphone and sharing your thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that what I've presented today helps your thinking in terms of what you can and can't do and inspires you to take action. And please, if you've liked the video, hit that like button as it will really help out this channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new releases from me in the future. Thank you for watching, everybody. Good luck with what you choose. And I'll be interested to see in the comments what you're doing, what you've chosen and what you're working on at the moment. Take care, everyone. Bye.